All right, so welcome back to the Metaverse. Today, we're going to jump into Polygon, why it's pumping, a little bit about its connection to Disney and what this might mean for the Metaverse and all that good stuff. My name is Paul Barron. Welcome back to Metaverse Insider. Let's get into it. First of all, the news hit yesterday. Polygon, of course, responded dramatically with some massive moves. We'll go through the chart today. I'll show you a little bit of sentiment, so make sure and stick around toward the end. That I want to jump to this first story, which really is, is the basis of what's happening here. Ch uh, Disney chooses Polygon to participate in its accelerator program, focusing on NFTs, AI, and AR. Now, there's quite a few companies that are in on this. Let me kind of zoom up on that for you guys. This year's Disney Accelerator class to be focused on building the future of immersive experiences and specializes in technologies such as AR, non-fungible tokens, NFTs, and then, of course, AI. From a character side, you saw Ryan Watt. He basically said, hey, the hits keep coming. Polygon has now been invited to Disney's prestigious accelerator program, uh, and they were the only blockchain that was selected. So that in itself tells me a lot right here because there are two things that could really start happening with Disney. One is the um, format or their roadmap maybe is now in place for how they're going to integrate uh, not only metaverse, but possibly blockchain into what the experiences might look like, both from a park standpoint, as well as a virtual standpoint. And then two, I think the bigger scenario here is the fact that they selected Polygon, which is a studio house. It also has an excellent layer two. Where is the connection going to be in the future? So I think there's some strategic plays that are being done here now with both Matic and also with, with Disney which unfortunately, I, I thought Polygon would actually move even more so, but did not. Uh, we'll break that down, but there's a lot to kind of break down in this story itself. Let me jump into a couple other aspects of this, which is kind of interesting. There's six different uh, companies that were selected. You had Polygon, obviously, in there, Flick Play, InWorld, Lockerverse, Obsess, and then Red Six. We'll break into a few of these. There's some that are, are very strategic on how this starts to paint out for Disney, because there's a lot of working parts and integral uh, aspects of how Metaverse may actually evolve with Disney. I'm not necessarily sure that the roadmap is completely set, even though, and if they are, Disney is definitely not showing it by playing their cards just yet. I want to jump into the accelerator itself. And we'll go into a, a little bit about what they're saying here, what resources and opportunities will be provided during the program. Uh, it's going to provide participating companies. It's like most accelerators, investment capital, uh, co-working space at Disney Creative Campus, mentor support, guidance, all that good stuff. Uh, and then notable business leaders from entertainment and technology community. And this to me is probably the bigger aspect of why Polygon could really benefit from this. Now, there are some things, when you look at major industry, now remember, the crypto community, NFTs, we're still playing in a very, very small sandbox. If you look at the size of the entertainment market, you look at the global opportunity here from a gaming aspect and also from an IP aspect that Disney brings to the plate, and I think that is probably the really kind of the unmatchable thing that Polygon will get access to that essentially no other blockchain company will. So that is going to be a huge advantage for what they're doing. Now, if you look at the, the rundown, I was just looking at their Polygon, or excuse me, their uh, accelerator. And there's a lot of very interesting companies in here uh, that have done very well. Here's some of their previous ones. I don't know what they did with Epic, but there's quite a few in here. There's Britain Co. in there, Emotive and quite a few, and there's a handful of others in here that I want to kind of jump to. Nam is in here, Production Pro, Smart Toy, this is, uh, that's the Sphero, which is the little BB-8 thing, and you can kind of see, and then here's Void. And now remember, Void had the whole idea around basically kind of like an arcade uh, for the next generation of AR, VR, and what happened with Void is obviously COVID kind of pretty much wrecked them and the RK Pioneer is trying to make a, a comeback. But remember, there was a facility uh, in Disney that was earmarked for Void. And guess what? Meta is the one that basically overtook that facility. So they have MetaQuest 2's virtual reality experience featuring ILM, X-Labs, Star Wars, Tales from the Galaxy's Edge, and of course, 
all of that is kind of going into, again, the expertise of what Meta is trying to bring to the table in terms of VR and what Oculus and the development of that might look like. So cool stuff here for sure. Uh, I want to show you a little bit about just where they are right now, a little bit on their video, because um, they have made some pretty big strides. And I think when you look at uh, Zuckerberg's most recent um, release of where this this technology is going, Meta is really kind of going all in. So you can kind of see some of the stuff they're doing here with, with Disney. Pretty cool stuff. Pretty cool stuff. I like it. All right, so let's get over to Flick Play 2, because this is another one that uh, is starting to play into this. This is kind of the social aspect of NFTs, which again, starts to play out in terms of the strategy of Disney is going to integrate NFTs. And, and I think we are going to be surprised over the next couple of years of just how far Disney is in be able, being able to integrate into the metaverse. So I'm really looking forward to seeing how they integrate a lot of these new startups. One of the other ones that were in this is InWorld. Now InWorld is doing basically uh, VR avatars. So think of it that way. Let me play this video here just to kind of give you a little bit of insight of where they're going. Let me jump ahead just a little bit and you can kind of get a chance to see a little about what they're trying to do. Again, very in tune with the Disney experience, definitely moving ahead in a very accelerated way. And I think the question will be how Disney integrates not only metaverse attributes through Polygon, but also how NFTs will eventually make its way either into the theme park or into virtual experiences, whether that is in theme park or possibly even in ways that they will be able to bring a new platform to the virtual space. That could happen in all sorts of metaverses or possibly their own metaverse. And, that, and we'll talk a little bit about that here in a second because there's some definite percent potentials of where um, Disney could be going. The other aspect on this one in this class is Obsessed. This is the one that gets into virtual stores for brands. Again, Disney is all about marketing. If you look at some of just the companies that are involved in this, Ralph Lauren, Coach, Christian Dior, I think this is great for the aspect of merchandising, the potential for merchandising in the metaverse, potential for VR, and new kinds of, of even shopping experiences that could play into this. So again, another big one. Uh, I want to get into the Matic chart, uh, which we'll show at the end, but there's a couple of other key strategic class members that are in this particular accelerator that make a lot of sense of how they're going. I do want to thank our sponsors, and that is iTrust Capital. If you're looking at long-term investment and you want to get into crypto, and maybe you want to do it in a way that, you know, it doesn't require you to work a lot. You've got to constantly, you know, guard the charts and deal with up-downs and bear markets and bull markets, is jumping into a crypto IRA is really simple. First of all, it's very easy to use. Uh, you can do some trading inside the app itself. This is one of those companies that is very trusted, 5.5 billion in transactions, over 175 accounts, 75,000 accounts created. And they've been a longtime partner of ours. We're gonna try to get them on the show to talk more and more about how they secure assets, all those kind of things. But the cool thing here is this is a long-term investment play. You can get a $100 funding reward just by clicking the link below and getting in. You don't even have to join, Just Give them your email, start learning a little bit about getting a crypto IRA in place, and boom, you'll be in, be in perfect spot for uh, your future there. Now, one of the other companies that uh, is included in this class is a company that is focused around external VR in, and think of this in harsh environments. And this one is basically rev revolutionary or combat training systems. If you look a little bit about what they're trying to do, essentially what they've done is create technology that will advance things that you would most likely see in outdoor environments. So think of this from a Disney aspect now. Okay, so whether you're at the park, you're looking at outdoor experiences, very harsh uh, issues and areas, heat, rain, et cetera, all those kind of things that play into experiences that, as you guys know, if you're a Disney fan, that you would have to be able to ramp up, especially if you get into VR, AR types of experiences. So I think this one behind Red Six and what they're doing, a very cool uh, and interesting play on this class for the Accelerator. And again, all this plays in back to NFTs, back to what the potential of the metaverse is. If you look at Bob Chapek's Sun Valley Challenge, he's trying to define his vision for Disney. now. When you look at the history of Disney, a lot of the CEOs in the past, whether it's Iger and others, they've kind of put their mark on Disney. 
And Chapik just has not done that. So when you look at the opportunity, in reality, he has probably the biggest opportunity ever in the history of Disney in terms of what's happened in the past 50 years. This is a big time for Disney. And you look at this article right here on The Hollywood Reporter, Chapik on the metaverse. Chapik's interesting, interest in exploring the metaverse as an idea of a digital world and real world can connect in some way. And I think that's going to be the magic behind Disney is that they figure out a way to bring IRL and virtual into a real immersive experience that begins to set the tone for maybe all sorts of applications, all derived in either metaverse, blockchain-driven uh, technology, and especially around NFTs. His January memo framed the metaverse as a new canvas on which to paint. But whether that means you know, creating virtual experiences that feel are real uh, or enhances just the themes parks them, themselves is kind of still up in the air. I think the question here will be, can he do it? Now, if you look at the lineup of the accelerator class, he's definitely putting the chess pieces in place to try to make this happen. I think this is a good selection uh, with the layer two on Matic. Now, if you look at what's happening elsewhere, uh, you can also look at D Disney unveiling their first new cruise ship in a decade, which is also dipping its toe into metaverse uh, features and uh, entertainment. So again, this gets back into the idea of bringing in real life experiences into the metaverse, which I think many people would agree that that really is kind of the first layer of next gen experiences that we are gonna be looking at, whether it's on gaming, or any kind of experiences that uh, if you have been a park goer for some time, you understand what that looks like for both kids and adults. It's a, it's a new, uh, I think it's a new opportunity for what could be maybe the next generation of the digital Disney. So very cool stuff happening with Disney. I think the fact that they've brought in uh, Matic is it's just huge uh, for them and also huge, I think, for crypto in general as well. Disney also uh, patents a virtual world simulator that doesn't require headsets, goggles, or smartphones. This will be huge if this actually happens. So a user can enter a venue or ride which images are projected onto a flat and curved surface. Basically, it's gonna be utilizing lighting and a lot of uh, technology that essentially will start to create virtual type experiences. So whether this actually works and how far down the road it is in terms of development into the parks, Still yet to be seen. Again, all this will be playing out, uh, I think, in the very near future. All right, so Bob Chapik, the key to Disney's metaverse push is the database. Now, here is something that uh, in this headline, to me, it says everything. And this is the thing that I argue about metaverse and who's going to win. And when you look at, there's two companies that I think are in front runner positions right now. Meta, Again, the database, because they have the massive user base from Facebook. And then Disney, who has a massive database of park goers, theme, all the IP, the potential to really explode. Those are really the two front runners. I don't put Apple in there. I don't even put Google in the race right now. I think it's between Facebook, Meta, and Disney to create what that experience might look like. Now, could they combine forces? Could there be potentials here of Facebook's integration into Disney parks for metaverse uses, possibly NFT, integrating blockchain? All of this could play out in a very interesting way, and I think in a, a fairly short time. The only problem is, can Chapik actually do it? That's gonna be the big question, because when you look at the real successors, Bob Iger, backed metaverse startup, Gen uh, Genie's Passes, which is a $1 billion uh, valuation now after its latest funding round. So essentially, Bob Iger has already started making waves in the you know blockchain, especially around the NFT side of things. And I don't know. I, I look at Iger and then I look at Chapik and I just think which one could really pull it off. Chapik has got all the tools. That's the advantage. You know, Iger left Disney at a time in which blockchain was really just evolving. Had Iger had Disney at this period of time, I think we would see a faster acceleration into the future of where Disney is going to go. So we'll see. Hey, we don't want to completely knock out what uh, Chapik is going to do because I think the tool sets are there. The developers are there. Again, it's still very early on. Technology is still early. So it's still yet to be completely proven out. But if anybody can do it, I think Matic is definitely going to be one of the players in there. If you guys want to check out our video, 
we did one here on Matic, um, and mainly what I did was I kind of broke down a lot of the new advantages of what Polygon was doing from their ecosystem, all that kind of stuff. So just check our, our channel out there. I want to get into a couple of charts here real quick. Uh, just on the Disney chart, again, not doing well when you look at it. Let's go to the weekly just to kind of give you guys a, a look here. It has not been in great position for a very long time. So Disney is really kind of almost at a, like a lot of the top stocks, whether it's S&P 500, that have continued to take a lot of heat. I was surprised that we didn't see a little movement here on Disney uh, because of this. But again, I think it's so early, most people don't even understand what Metaverse is or what it can mean to what the experiences of Disney will be in the next decade. And if you're betting long-term on something like Disney, then that's the potential for it. Now, when you look at things that are happening over on Matic, let's take a look quickly. This is a completely different chart because you had Matic trending down on even on our sentiment. And then yesterday, immediately, we had a sentiment spike of 2.3 points and an amplification spike of 1.9 points. And of course, we had that nice little move. What was that move from its bottom right here? So up to its top right there, you're at 20%. Uh, it's adjusted down now, and you're at 16% right now with Matic trading at 62 cents. So again, remember, look at Matic from a short-term uh, play if you are trading it. Uh, right now, I would say this is going to be a very short-lived pump just because of the pressures that we're seeing on the market and other, other areas from a global and a macro standpoint. But I, wanna, I want you to watch Matic very closely here because... I think Matic could be a very good long-term investment. And when you guys are looking at our bags or your bags from a long-term standpoint, especially in blockchain and some of the altcoins, I want you to start, try to start thinking about who are making the plays that are plays that are decade-long plays. And if you look at Matic and this move right here with Disney, if they come out of the accelerator in any positive fashion at all, and put a deal together with Disney, that could be awesome timing for Matic during its uh, run back up to, because I still think we're still maybe 18 to 24 months away from really seeing any fireworks coming out of all this stuff. All right, you guys are tuned in over on the podcast right now. Make sure and tune in here on the YouTube channel. Uh, you can also check out our other podcast, which is TechPath Crypto. Very simple. Just search that. You'll find us on iTunes, Spotify, all that good stuff. But YouTube is the place where it all happens. Make sure and jump over here. Just subscribe to the channel, like a couple of videos. You'll get some feeds in there. And it will also let you know when we're going live, which we try to do at 3 p.m. on weekdays. Sometimes we'll do back-to-back -back lives, but uh, make sure, and as I said, just hit the bell for notifications. You'll get those. So if you guys want to reach me, it's out on Twitter. Make sure and follow me out there. And of course, thanks again for watching Metaverse Insider.